Yeah, funny. Two ways to go. We want a blow note and a draw note. So this is the 
air solar we got from the robotics lab we got here at no cost. Um, we have two of them, and they're 24 volt DC. Initially, we were planning on putting it inside the, the box that you'll see later. This is a picture of the box. There's a picture of our, our air um, <coughs> vacuum. And over here is the, the solenoid uh, controlled air valve. But later on, we decided to keep that out of the box because it did kind of get a little hot. Okay. This was the flow diagram for the air. We had started with the two um, vacuum motors inside the box and down the air out of there. And these are pictures of the solenoids. What we did from the solenoids, we ran it into one fitting here at a T. Because one solenoid would be open while the other one was closed. So if this was drawing the note out, this one would be shut so there would be no flow on this side. And then it would just pull the air this way. So the harmonic would play a draw note. And opposite, when this one was off, this one was on. So the blow would go this way and then there was no flow over here. So the channel itself right into the harmonica. There's the mouthpiece that we put together. You'll see that later. Power management on the system, we have two, two of these. One was a 12 volt um, AC to DC converter, one was a 24 volt. Um, they were manufactured by a copian. They were relatively inexpensive because I had them laying around. And they were small. And we mounted them inside the box. The uh, 12 volt supply gave us uh, 500 milliamps, and the 24 volt was 750 milliamps. 12 volts would run the motor. The stepper motor, we never really got a good spec on it because it was an old printer and the, we couldn't find any specifications on the stepper motor itself. We had to literally do trial and error to get this thing to move. Uh, this is a, just a picture of the wiring diagram. There's our, our box. We plug the box into the wall and then we take uh, the power out of that. There's a, fuse, a couple fuses in there for safety. And the vacuum motors are hooked up into this, this power strip. We have an actual power strip inside the box. <coughs> There's our two power supplies that come out. They supply voltage to our um, OPEC microcontroller and our custom design circuit. And I'll explain later. Here's some connections going to our stepper motor, uh, connections going to our valves, and we have our microcontroller which will connect the keypad. Some of this is, is data. Okay, as far as electronics, there was two main circuits that we had to get through this. One was the step motor control circuit, and the next was the valve. This is the step motor. What it was was on the, the step motor itself, there's two coils, and each coil is center tapping. The only thing we needed to do was get a signal in from the microcontroller, which is these, these right here. They come out, that was our phasing sequence that you saw earlier. If the steps of the analyzer, they'll come in and they'll set up a path for the current to flow because on this, the uh, stepper motors, I think uh, there's another better slide of that. On um, the stepper motors, you just want to get current to go through a coil and that'll create a next step. It moves that way. So we use some uh, TIP120 um, transistors and grounds, pretty simple circuit. and. <coughs> It just created a path to flow when we got our signal from the control. Next slide. This is the picture of the circuit itself. Here's the picture of the stepper motor circuit. If you can see, it looks like there's four coils. There's actually only two coils, but they're tapped in the center. Like this one goes over to this one, and it's just a connection. So in the middle of both of these coils is, uh, is voltage, and that voltage is always there. What we did was, when these circuits got the signal from the controller, it grounded partial side of a coil. Like L1 is connected to L4, they're tapped in the middle. When we ground, we create a path to go through the L1 coil and the L4 coil is not having current, so that creates the steps and then it rotates. Okay. okay, here's a picture of our valve circuits. Valve circuits, we use two relays, uh, one for each valve. On the transistor side, we got our inputs for the base of the transistor. What they would do would create a 
switch when our signal came in to tell the relay to turn on. The relay would close the switch and just supply 12 volts to one side of our uh, valves. The valves were 24 volts, but we had a, a dual output 12 volt supply. So we connected one side of the valve to minus 12. The other side was this. And once this switch was closed, then that would put 12 volts positive on the other terminal of the relay. And then it would put 24 volts across the, 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 uh, the, the valve. And then it would shut the valve or open the valve. And then that would be the no, that's 58. Yeah. Uh, well, this, yeah, we had to, we didn't know how much current we were going to draw out of the old pick. We're just running the old pick off a 9 volt battery. So we limited it somewhat by putting the resistor there. It would work fine without any resistor at all. We tried it that way, but we decided that if we put one there, we would save our battery. Here, as we talk about our controller. One of the first things we had to decide was how we were going to make everything move. Um, so we had to determine what microcontroller we were going to use. Uh, we did a little bit of research, and Jim and I, we drove down to Miami and we attended a uh, microcontroller seminar. Um, and it was about two hours, they presented different ideas, um, different peripherals you can use with a microcontroller, ways to go about implementing these peripherals. And we ended up uh, picking the OPIC microcontroller because uh, it had plenty of I.O. lines that we could use. Uh, it was real easy to program. You could program it in basic syntax, Java syntax, or C syntax. So whichever language you're familiar with, you could use that to implement it. And it has a lot of native support for peripheral devices. So you don't have to go in at a base level and tell your LCD how it works. All you have to do is tell the microcontroller that there's an LCD connected on a certain I.O. line, and they can start using it. So it saved us a lot of development time. Uh, we didn't have to reuse a lot of code. Excellent. Two of the devices we got attached, uh, we've got a keypad that allows the user to um, select a hole on the keypad. You got your uh, 16 keys, 10 of them uh, determine what hole is going to be played on the harmonica. So if you press the upper leftmost key, that's hole number one. So it'll move the harmonica to hole number one and then play a blow note. If you want to play a suck note or a draw note, there's a key on the keypad that determines that. You press that, and then you press the hole, and move to the hole and play that note. Um, we have uh, another um, key on there that turns the backlight on and off, which you'll see in a later picture. And then we have four pre-programmed songs into the OO pick that the user can select with one of these keys. Uh, in order to save I.O. lines, we only had uh, 32 to work with, and uh, just about all of them were getting used up purchased a uh, LCD controller, which takes our parallel LCD and converts it to a serial signal. So instead of using like 12 uh, I.O. lines, we're only using one. Okay, we have, uh, the other way we can control it if you don't want to use the keypad, is we have a Windows interface that I've developed. Um, you can either write your own songs in a text file, save them, open them, and play them, or as you can see, we have a list of songs you can select from. Twinkle, twinkle, or Frere Jaca, or whatever kind of music you like. Um, click on that song from the list. It'll show you what the song notes are. And then you click play song, and it goes ahead and plays the song for you. And this software was done in uh, Visual C++ uh, in uh, Microsoft uh, .NET. OK, this is uh, the code for the old microcontroller. You can see uh, a little bit here. Top just shows you the version history. You can see we started, uh, what months we started on, what, what basic parts of the code were completed. So this way we had an idea of what we completed, what was left to do, um, and make sure that everything was real clear and all the functions were well defined. Next. Yeah, the program code is about 30 pages. Yeah, it's in one of the appendices. We, we had a little bit of time left when we finished, so we decided that uh, no harmonica player was good if we couldn't play in the dark. <laughs> so uh, we wired up the backlighting so that if, if you're uh, one night and your lighting goes out, you can still use our device. <laughs> and now Rick's going to tell you a little bit more about the construction methods. The, one of the big uh, obstacles was making another piece of that. I'm sure we have airflow, but how is it going to go to the harmonica and make a sound? If the hole's too big? 
big, you're not going to get a good sound if you have too much loss. So basically, the mouthpiece, which you will see, is made of a plexiglass. I made a pro engineering drawing, and uh, Jeff uh, Webb in the machine shop, he actually did the machining on it. Um, the opening to the harmonica itself is a rectangular slot. It spans one hole uh, as the focus hole when, when you go to that hole, plus about a third of each surrounding hole. That's so harmonica, you want to play a chord, you don't want to play a single note. If you just play a hole, it won't sound like a harmonica. So you want that harmonizing effect with the chord. So that's why that was made that size. The other side is cap, just for a standard brass fitting to match all our lines. And the, uh, it's bolted down just using wing nuts. And it's slightly drilled larger, so we can have some adjustment like that. But basically about a thousand, two thousand of an inch is the, is the uh, distance between the other piece of harmonica. The box, if we show you a picture of I think that's actually next that's what, what houses our, our pump and our vacuum. Our power supply, we have a main power switch on here. And there's holes cut out with little grommets for our lines to come out. The, one of the obstacles we had was the, the sound of the pumps was drowning out the sound of our harmonica. So we enclosed it, and Jim had some soundproof rubber, which we lined the entire box with. So it got rid of the sound, but it also insulated it, so we ended up with a heat drop. So a lot of times when we test it, we do it with the top off just to let it vent in. Um, the harmonica mount, I talked about that earlier, but basically it's just, we use the existing inkjet uh, carrier, level that off, aluminum, one-eighth aluminum slab, just to make it nice and level, and uh, the harmonica bolted right to it, it's capped right in there and screwed in. Uh, the LCD and keypad mounting, just use regular two-inch two PVC pipe, um, painted a chrome just to make it look a little fancy, and because we wanted it to be aesthetically and user-friendly for convenience with this 45-degree elbow. And it's just just plywood other than that. The stepper motor, when we first started, we had uh, we, we didn't think we could use this original stepper motor, so we had a newer one. I think we got that from Dr. Mazier. But the shaft was larger, so we had but the gearing. We didn't want to have to start messing with gears, so we made a little gear puller to get the, uh, the original gear off the original stepper motor, machined it, uh, drilled a little hole, and uh, pressed it onto the new motor. Then we found out we knew how to <laughs> work the original stepper motor. So we, re we took that out and redesigned it and installed the original back on the, uh, the printer mechanism. And Jim had mentioned before that the, uh, the range of motion, 50 steps to do a complete work, one rotation of the stepper motor. We found out that from hole to hole is 18 steps, and it's basically what the, what the keypad does, is plus or minus one, two, three, will go 18 steps forward or backward, or how many steps you need to go to the next, uh, the next hole. And Jim had mentioned the motor voltage is 12 volt, the air pumps are 120, uh, 9 volts for the battery for the go pick, and 24 volt for the, uh, the solenoid valves. And each note length right now is half a second. So there's no, you can do a rest. We have some rest in some of the songs, but basically you press one of the keys, you're getting a half a second note. The next one's a half a second. So there isn't a, uh, no variable. It's, yeah, it's not a real time. If you hold it, it stays. It's just, it's half a second. It's just that we managed our project to make sure that uh, everything was getting done on time and we get an idea of uh, as we were going along, if we finished one thing, we knew what the next thing was. If we needed to do something, go back and look and see what parts needed to go into that.
yeah. Professional. Peter's a good speaker. It's cool, dude. They're all good. Thank you. 